Hey guys, in this video, I'll walk you through how to transform a normal looking mouse cursor from this to look more like this in WordPress. So this was something I had to incorporate into the last project I was working on and I decided to share with you guys. Starting off, I gotta say we'll be using a little bit of CSS and JavaScript to achieve this and you don't have to worry about writing a single line of code. This should be a walk in the park, I promise. So this video will be in two parts all the way to the end where we'll talk about how to achieve this using the help of a free plugin and this should work regardless of the theme or page reader you might be using. And on the other hand, if you've got the pro version of Elementor, you get to do the same right within Elementor. Now for those that want to be using the pro version of Elementor to achieve this, let's head to plugins, add new and search for the plugin insert headers and footers by WP beginners install and then activate so from here you want to hover over settings to select insert headers and footers and the script in header and footer will be the fields you'd want to insert the javascript code in now for those that have elementor pro installed you want to hover over elementor and select custom code but let's open this up in a new tab just so we keep things different between these two and from here, click on add new custom code. Which brings us to the next step, which will be inserting the JavaScript code to our site. So I'll title this as magicmouse.js. Make sure the location is set to head. And I'll leave a link to the text file in the description so you can download and follow along. Now, the first line of code will be what we want to copy directly below start magicmouse.js heading. Down to this line of code directly above end magicmouse.js heading. So let's copy and paste that into this field and then hit the publish button. We should prompt this pop-up as to where we want to display this code. This just goes to say we can condition the custom code to specific pages on your site if you want it. But since we want this included on the entire site, I'll just save and close this. We also have another JavaScript code to publish before we move on to the next step. So click on add new. Title this as magicmouse.js options. And the location this time will be the site's body end. Now let's head back to the notes part and copy from below the magicmouse.js options to directly above end magicmouse.js options. And let's move over to paste that in here. Publish on entire site. Save and close. So that's how you go about adding the JavaScript code to your site using Elementor Pro. Now let's see how we can do the same using the insert header and footer plugin. So I'll just head back to this tab, open up the notes part, and just as we did adding the line of code using Elementor Pro, let's copy the code starting from magicmouse.js heading to end magicmouse.js heading. And we want to paste that into the header section. And I want to repeat the same for the second line of code, which is the JS options. So I'll copy this bit, and this time I want to paste the code into the script in footer. And then hit the save button. So with this, we should be on the same page for both parties, but we're not done just yet. Because if we take a look at our site, we can tell the mouse cursor is no longer visible unless we interact with something on this page. So let's finish things up by adding a complementing CSS code to the site. And we can do this either with the built-in customizer in WordPress or using Elementor Pro itself. Since I'm on this page, I can just click on the customize button. Now, depending on the theme you might be using at the time, this may look different for you. And if you have a theme that supports its CSS option in the themes option, you can just move over there. I've got Astra installed on this site, so I'll just select additional CSS and paste the CSS code into this field. So let's open up the notes part and this time we want to copy the line of code starting with the magic mouse CSS code. And let's paste that into this field and automatically the custom cursor should appear. So what's left now is to style the cursor. But just before we do that, let's do the same for Elementor Pro. So let's head back to the site settings, view site, hover over edits with Elementor, and select site settings. Once that opens up, under settings, select custom CSS. So let's copy and paste the code into this field. And there we go. 
So either you're on the customize tab or using the site settings from Elementor, we cannot start out customizing this cursor to match the look of the site. Just so I can see more of this line of code, I can just head to the edge of this field and drag that point all the way to the bottom. Now taking a look at this code, we've got just two options to be on the lookout for. We've got the first, the hashtag magic mouse cursor, which, which controls the mouse outline, and the second hashtag magic pointer, which controls the pointer within the circle. Let's start out with the mouse cursor, and we can skip past the Z index and position. And let's say I wanted to customize the border width and color, this would be where I get to do that. So if I change its border width to 2 pixels, that automatically reflects here. And the same applies if I decided to make that 10 pixels. Personally, I found its sweet spot to be about 2 pixels, so let's just leave that set to 2 pixels. The next option we've got here will be its color, so I can change its color to black if I wanted to. And to fall back to white, I can just type that in here or enter its color hex code, which is hashtag FFF. Now, the next option we've got here is the background color within this outline. As we can see, it's dark but transparent. So let's say I wanted to make this completely transparent. I can either delete the background option entirely or I can still have it in there, but adding the color hex code for a transparent background. In this case, since the dark background blends well with this yellow color, I'd rather make the RGB color to 0.1 instead of 2. Next, we've got the body radius. And if I change this to 0, this is what we get. A square. I kind of fancy that. Alright, next we've got the transition. Essentially, this controls the speed in which it takes for the cursor to catch up with the little pointer at the middle. At the moment, we've got this set to 0.7 seconds. And let's say we wanted the outline to catch up to the pointer much slower. And we made this 10.07 seconds. Now, if I move the cursor, we can see it takes 10.07 seconds for it to catch up. So, a fair value to put in there might just be 0.05 seconds. So, that's all for the magic cursor. Now, let's move over to the magic pointer, which gives us control over the pointer at the middle of this border outline. Starting with the height, I can choose to make this 10 pixels and now this looks a bit disoriented. And that's because whatever value you use for the height has to correspond to the width. So if I made this 10 pixels, we should have a perfect circle, but this seems a bit too much for the mouse cursor. So I can reduce its size to 5 pixels or 6 pixels. You'd want to leave the top, left and position as is and underneath we get the option to change the pointer color to match the site branding. So let's say I wanted to make this black, I can easily do that either by text or its color hex code, which is hashtag triple zeros. For its body radius, I can make this zero and now we've got the pointer squared. Also, if I wanted to fall back to the previous settings, I can just do so by making adjustments to all values that need adjusting. Least I forget, if you're actually not satisfied with the size of the mouse outline, you can head back to the JS code option. And for the outer width and height, remember they both need to be corresponding, so you can increase or reduce its sizes here. And if I made this 50 pixels and update or save this depending on where you might be adjusting this from. Now, if I visit sites and compare them both, we should see a slightly bigger border radius to the first. It may not be too obvious, and the reason for that is because we just increased this by 5 pixels. And that's it for this video. If you got value, be sure to hit the like button and you're always welcome to subscribe to the channel if you like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.